Every time I go to a funeral service, there's an activity that I I must do. I I I I, I am tempted every time to do it. Praise God. You know when I came up today, I said no, I wouldn't do it at this funeral service. But while I was sitting there, hey man, you know temptation is sometimes. It just hits you, and I, I said, no, and it just hit me. I said, I have to do it, praise God. So I want us to listen carefully. I want us to listen carefully, praise God. Amen. I like to, you know, do a little bit of mathematics just to work out how long the person who died, how long he or she lived, amen? Praise God. Anybody here knew that Sister Utah was born on a Saturday? Anybody here knew that? I guess I'm the only person who knows that. She was born on a Saturday. Anybody know that she died on a Sunday? Yeah. I guess we all know that. Praise God. She died on a Sunday. Anybody here knows that she lived for 72 years, 9 months, and 11 days? Yeah. Anybody know that? We have some bright folks in the audience. But did anybody know that she lived for 872 months and 2 weeks? Nobody knows that except for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 872 months and two weeks. She lived for 3,632 weeks and five days. Anybody know that? Yeah? I'm the only person that knows that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. She lived for 25,457 days. Anybody know that? Yes, oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And I take it a little bit further. Praise God. These are estimates now because I didn't know the ex exact time she died. So I have to do a little bit of estimation. Praise God. And so in my estimation, she lived for 610,968 hours. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody want to hear more? You want to hear more? Praise God. So I'm going to give you more. Praise God. And then she lived for 36 million six hundred and fifty eight thousand and eighty minutes anybody knows that somebody want to hear again oh hallelujah praise god the mic keeps chipping up i don't know what's wrong praise god but in a service that is we need to have a perfect mic praise god and we don't want no mic to be chipping in on out and sister Lucas fill it up. We don't want that. Praise God. So whatever you need to do to fix it, please fix it. Fix it now. Amen. So let me go again. Praise God. And the pastor you to live 36 million six hundred and fifty-eight thousand and eighty minutes. That's how long she lived. Why anybody want to hear it? Anybody want to go further? Anybody want to know how many seconds she did? Remember now, this is an estimate. I didn't know exact time she died. Praise God. Hallelujah. But she lived 2 billion 199 million 484,800 seconds. That's how long Pastor you to live, praise God. And that sounds long, don't it? Praise God. But how long did it take her to pass on to eternity? How long did it take? Less than a second. Praise God. Somebody lift those hands and worship God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We don't know how long we're going to live. Praise God. Neither do we know when we're going to die. But that 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 line between, amen, our birth and our death, what we do with it will determine where we spend our eternity. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now we have the first lesson that will be read by Kedisia Johnson and Ronette Cumberbatch. And these are grandchildren.
everyone? Praise, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. The reading is taken from Job chapter 14, Job 14. Man that is born of a woman is of man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till till he shall accomplish as an hiring his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth forth like plant. But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from sea, and the floods decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not wake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath, thy wrath be past that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. 14 and ending. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. This is a portion of the reading of God's holy word. We'll just say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. If a man die, shall he live again? Said all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. Praise God, sister. Pastor Yuta's change has come. Praise God. She's gone to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so this time we have a tribute by Evangelist Hillville Smith and it's from Warsaw, followed by a tribute by Sister uh, Minister Norma Smith. Amen. And she'll be giving that tribute on behalf of the Women's Fellowship Department of Region 5 and as a family friend. Amen? Praise God. And then we're going to have an item. And then we're going to have an item by the Albertown Health District. So you come in that order. Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings to the minister of the Rasta, those that are in the congregation. Greetings to everyone that are here this afternoon. We are here to celebrate the life of our dear pastor, Yuta, our high con, you know, a lady that you just can't name her, she's just a great lady. Amen. And I would be feeling good this afternoon, not saying anything about Pastor Yuta. We plan to have a celebration, our life that she lived. And we plan to celebrate her and honor her in this church. When it was planned, I was the first person that stood up that said, I want to say something about her. Pastor Utah. Eventually, it didn't materialize, but this is the way it happened. Thanks be to God, and we are not really sorry that we are here in this session because Pastor Utah has done her job. And this race that she was running 
it is a relay race. And she will have to pass on the baton. She couldn't run all along because somebody's waiting along the way. So she has run her leg and she has passed on the baton, the baton, and we are not really here. Sorry here this afternoon. We are here to celebrate, to give thanks for this great icon, Pastor Yuta. I've known her all her life. In my life, I've known she's just maybe a year older than I. We have grown up together. Amen. Amen. We live in the same yard. And I'm trying to say, if I could say any, find anything that's not good about Pastor Yuta. I try and I can't come with anything about this great woman of God. Amen. We, 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 we work together in the ministry. When she started out at Wilson's Run, and then um, our pastor here asked me to go up to Wilson's Run and um, work with her in the ministry. And I worked with her a number of years. Amen. And I just can't find any fault. I will still. I know that Pastor Yuta, she has answered many questions that the Bible has asked. One such question that the wise man said and asked, who can find a virtuous woman? Yes, I can say we have found a virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies and diamonds. Praise the Lord. Another question that was asked in the Bible, that Somebody asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And I think that person was looking. I was looking for Jesus and say, the greatest commandment of all is to keep the Sabbath. But Jesus turned around and said to her, the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And second to it is to love your neighbor as yourself. I've seen where Pastor Yuta, she even loves her neighbor more than herself. She takes you just about everybody. And I, you know, I would just stay here this afternoon and talk about this great icon, Pastor, but time. Time, time, time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Before the sister, before the sister, Dr. come, I'm going to ask Joan, Faye's daughter, to come and she's going to sing a special song. Praise God. Worship as you minister in Jesus' name. Shall we praise the Lord, everyone? Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am here this afternoon, and it is a very, oh Lord, I don't know how to say it, but I know you understand. I have gone to so many funerals, and I've ministered. And for me to be ministering today, I needed to worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. For the skies may turn to gray.
Jordan, my prior partner. Jordan, hallelujah. I remember as a young lady, when I got that call, that she would like me to be her prior partner. It has been many, many years. She has gone through high school, she has gone through college, and we are still the same. Lift up your hand and give God the glory. I am here this morning, let me greet our national superintendent, Bishop Ogoth McCoy, our assistant superintendent, Bishop Dave Fisher, our presbyter, Pastor Robert Edwards, all the other ministers that are on the platform or seated in the congregation, all the saints of God or visiting friends, greetings to everyone in the lovely name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Lord. On behalf of the Women's Fellowship Department, the National Women's Fellowship Department, our national president is seated on the rostrum and our regional coordinator she's not here because of things that she has no control over and so on behalf of the national and regional women's fellowship department i want to extend um, condolence to the Utah's family and the church family praise the lord everyone lord. lift up your hands and give god the glory Hallelujah. sorry pastor allen Praise God. I'm happy to greet you and Sister Allen. And you know, sometimes when we come here, come to these places, Pastor Dawson, coming from way back there, Youth Department, Tarimber. When it, we had this um, service in um, Hopewell in Hanover, and I got a note that time the phone was not so popular. I got a note from the late Pastor Utah. Don't worry yourself. I'm going to pick you up. While I was there, got ready and I was waiting. I heard something like a bike because we knew that Pastor Utah had a bike. And so I heard the bike say, who is Pastor Utah coming to pick me up with the bike and Sister Utah is there. Anyway, I stood there. And when I looked, I saw this white vehicle drove, driving up. And saints and friends, when I looked, it was a shining white car. And as I look, I saw this elegant lady rocking two sides in the front of the vehicle. And as the vehicle drew up at my gate, the late Pastor Utah opened the door and he said, Here comes the triumph. Who right. remembers the triumph? And as he said that, he said, Sister Smith, Put your hand on the triumph and bless it in the name of Jesus. And I did that. And that triumph take us to many places, ministering, especially in the missions department and the women's fellowship department. Women, let us stand in honor of a great and noble woman of God. Praise the Lord. And as you keep standing, let me finish. But my life, any life, real life, wasn't about pursuing the prizes. Shall we bless the Lord, everyone? Shall we just wave our hands and just magnify the name of the Lord Jesus? He's beautiful for every situation. God in the good times and in the bad times. Bless the name of Jesus. Officiating ministers, Bishop Hogarth McCoy, Presbyter Robert Edwards, Shepherd of this house, Pastor Leslie Allen, all the distinguished members of the clergy, I greet you warmly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Tribute to Pastor Hyacinth Utah. Angels descending from above, embracing you in their wings of love. Here you drew your last breath, and your spirit now transcends with outstretched arms 
at your knees you bend. Your time on earth comes to an end. Your master called you home. Today, we gather here to pay tribute to a remarkable soul, Pastor Isaac Yuta, one of the matriarch of the Greater Highway Movement in Jamaica. As we reflect upon the life and legacy of this extra, extraordinary individual, let us celebrate the profound impact she had on our lives. She has made an indelible mark upon our hearts. Baptized by the late Pastor Albert Henry in the year 1970, she was one of the founding members when the church first started in 1975. Pastor Yuta served as Sunday school teacher, general secretary. She was ordained a missionary in air, offer a comforting shoulder, and to provide guidance in a time of uncertainty. We at the Church of Christ remember her as a very hospitable person. Her home was always open to the saints, but more so for new converts and for the less fortunate. She was passionate about outreach ministry and the winning of souls. Always excited about street meetings, fasting services, and house-to-house -house prayer meetings. She was always enthused about visiting the sick and the shut-in. Even though I was a child, but a child when she was at highway, I can clearly remember her voice is echoing songs such as The Great Physician Now Is Here When We Visited the Sick. Every day I'm camping in the land of Canaan when we were singing with the choir. And our Sunday school song, Run Children Run. She was a lover of Sunday school and most of all, Along with her late husband, Pastor Desmond Yuta, they were devoted to church, always, almost never absent. We will always remember the fellowship we shared with her. Her preaching was more than just mere words. They were powerful messages that resonated deep within our souls. With her gentle voice, that's with her gentle voice that so powerfully conveyed the undiluted teachings of Christ, imparting wisdom, encouragement, and hope to all who listen. Pastor Iacinth Yuta had a unique ability to connect with people from all walks of life, inspiring all to embrace the apostolic doctrine and to live a life centered in God's love. Now, this part is for Daddy. Pastor Yuta was a blood sister to our bishop and in a world of mad by transient connection the bond between brother and sister stands as a testament to the enduring power of family their relationship was a shining example of love support and unbreakable unity from their earliest days they were inseparable sharing dreams and laughter and though there were notable storms and tests throughout their lives and relationship as brother and sister, through the eyes and the lows of life journey, they stood side by side, motivating and uplifting one another. Their special bond was a source of strength, pushing them to overcome challenges and to celebrate victories together. In each other, they found solace, understanding and lifelong of their brother and sister relationship was a beacon of light even to us their children reminding us all of the beauty and resilience that lies within the bonds of family indeed blood is thicker than water as we bid farewell to pastor is in utah let us remember the moments of joy of laughter and enlightenment she brought to our life. Let us honor her memory by carrying forward her teachings, by being a source of love and support to those around us, and by living lives that reflect the grace and compassion she embodied. 
Though our hearts may ache with loss of such a remarkable individual, let us find solace in the knowledge that Pastor Iasin Yuta is now in the loving arms of our Heavenly Father. May her soul rest in eternal peace and may her spirit continue to guide and inspire us as we journey on. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just so worship the Lord as we minister. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, uh, you know, amen. But God is good in spite of everything. Amen. And God knows everything the best. And uh, all we need to do is just to make sure that when our time comes. Our soul is right. Amen. 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 That's the Lord. So we're going to do this song um, from Highway, and we just want you just to worship the Lord as we minister in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hear the sound. Of a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet
recognize all the pastors, ministers that are on the platform. And as I call you, I'm going to ask you to just stand and just give a praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. I'm going to ask Bishop God from Creator Highway of us to the back. All right. Amen. Pastor Susan. And Lady Susan, could you just stand and go to the Lord Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise God! Amen. Pastor York and Minister York, could you stand? Praise God! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Amen. Minister Jasper Dowler. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Minister Dixon.
Pastor Yuta before she she died. And after relating to me all her symptoms, I could relate with her to exactly to what she was saying. Because those are some of the things I personally went through, what she went through. And so I spoke to my cardiologist and made arrangements for Pastor Yuta to come into Montego Bay to get some tests run. And we got everything arranged and we were excited, waiting for her to come. But the Lord saw it fit to take her home. And so today we rejoice yeah. and we thank God because, you know something? We talk about legacy. We talk about what's left behind. Pastor Utah has left behind a great legacy. Praise God. She did not just sit and look, but even in her illness, that lady pushed herself. Amen. She pushed herself. She didn't complain. But she gave God thanks. And so today we are here to rejoice. Because, yes, one soldier, one soldier, one fighter has gone home to be with her maker. And so we, to the family members, we do offer our condolences. And to let you also know that we are praying for you and whatever we can do to assist as a region, we will do that. God bless you. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to call Amen, Pastor Leroy Dawson Amen. to come as one of those ministers or pastors who was born in this assembly. It will be remiss of Peter that given him a chance to greet us. My good friend, sir, Pastor Dawson. Indeed, it is a very great honor and privilege for me to stand here and greet our National Superintendent, Bishop Ogas McCoy, Assistant Superintendent, Bishop Dale Fisher, all the other ministers on the platform, pastors of other organizations and ministers, and uh, all the saints of God, Bishop Nelson and his wife, I really want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm very delighted to be back home uh, myself and my wife and another minister from Life Tabernacle, Minister Michael Williams. We are delighted. I respectfully will leave the greeting from, from the church and the organization to the illustrious members of the platform. But in the interest of time, I will on behalf of the Dawson's family, Loyal and Isilda, Devon, Errol, Ruth, Grace, Dawn, Valda, would like to say thank you for your warm welcome and service to God. You know, I am thankful for the opportunity to be exposed to the gospel right here. I remember when we got the Holy Ghost with some of my friends on a Monday evening. The Lord gloriously filled me with the Holy Ghost after my father played a trick on me when we were going over to one of his fields. And uh, he said to me, keep watching the Lord. And so I keep wondering why my father said that. But as we were going, we went into a more overgrown bush. And then I was watching him. 
and then I was looking for a mango. And then I turned around and I didn't see my father. So I I just bawled out, Paul! And, and then he said, you must be ready for the rapture. It can happen anytime. So I, I want to tell everyone, make sure you are ready. I, I, it would be remiss of me if I didn't speak something on behalf of the Utah's family because they have been a faithful, loving, dedicated couple to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My father, Laurel Dawson, benefit from the, the, the dedication of Desmond Newton in such a way that when he was many, many Sunday mornings, when others would be preaching and sharing the word here, Brother Newton would ride one of those S90 bike and go into Maple with my father with his briefcase on his leg. And they're going to the church in Maple to preach to come back. And let me tell you, in Brompton and other places, but God has been good. We have a legacy, one that can never die because we serve a great, big, wonderful God who is always victorious, always watching over us. And let us implore you, without God, we are nothing. Praise the Lord of the Lord. Praise God. I'm going to ask Bishop Mars of our teams to give us a shout of praise. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bishop Keith Morris, holy this God. All right. And then we have Bishop Kahul. Give us good to sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We also have in the house the mayor, Colin Cogner. I give it to Rama. Where is he? Good to have you, sir. And let me also greet all the justice of the peace that are justices of the peace that are in the house. I'm gonna ask all the justice of the peace, justice of the peace to stand. Stand up, justice of the peace. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a great woman, Pastor Luther. Yes. Amen. And this time we have a tribute by Sister Lisson Garden Beast, followed by the Donner. All right, Remembrance by Lorraine Brown, Sister, followed by the offering. And for the offering, I'm going to ask Evangelist Peters to pray for the offering. Shall we magnify the name of the Lord? Shall we magnify the name of the Lord? Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies and diamonds. Salma. Pastor Yuta, Miss Creamy. A lot of people don't know her as Sister Norma because she grew up in the family home. We all grew in the family home. So is our sister, is my sister. So to cut a long story short, we don't worry when we break our pizza and we say, Sama. That is Sister Norma. But for me, it's sis. Sister Norma, she lived a full, full life. I miss her to the depth of my heart. My sister home was not just a home for her kids and for a house. It's everybody's home. Everybody's home. I am bringing it down on the curtain today because we know that spiritual life. But let me talk about the earthly life that she lived. She lived a good life. And the crowd, as you see the crowd here, it has no question. You could see the dead here. You could see the wake. I've never seen in my life ever since I was born. 
and grave digging and you have two nine nights two nine nights you have the community nine nights you have the, the candlelight you have the wake you have memorial service going down memory lane with my sister let me tell you something i write a book here I write a book here, but I don't need to read the book. I don't need to read the book. Because I know my sister from A to Z. I know everything about my sister. And that is my sister, Sama. When every time my sister introduces anybody to me, she not say Lorraine. She not say Lolo. She said, this is my baby sister. This is my baby sister. That's how we grew. Mama trained us well. Mama God trained us well. She lived, she, she lived a mercy throne for us. Let me tell you something. Victoria Gordon. And she saw a seed of mercy. And the seed of mercy that she threw out is looking only my sister now my Lord catch a seed of mercy. <laughs> It's like the only sister in our heart, you don't get to see that mercy. Not that the others don't do it, they do it. But everyone that walks through Sister Norma's door, if you walk through it with empty handed, you come out blessed. You come out blessed. If you go through the door hungry, you come out full. You come out full. My sister, Sister Nama. Sometimes people are good and said, How oh, this young woman want to have people dead? So, uh uh. Every venue, every dead, dead yard, every grave digging, funeral, I fear her house every food cook. Every food cook at her house. Sometimes you wonder. And she sit there, she never grumble. Rain farm, you go straight through. Bathroom, straight through. Sometimes I sit down and I say, my God, no man, on a must can have to go to the bathroom. They walk straight through and nothing to my sister. Nothing to my sister. There's a place up there for people like you. There's a place up there for people like you. Some are no grumble. Some are no murmur. If you give her anything you give her, I say, sis, what you need? She said, I need to bring one hand back to me. Hand back come, if hand back no come, nothing to her. She said, you have your kids, you have your business, I do. Do your business. And when a person can stand firm and stand flat footed and said, I am heaven bound. She live a life. She live a life. She, she examine herself and she live the life. She said, sister, I don't know about you, but I am heaven bound. And I know I'm going to make it in. That's confident. She has confidence in herself that she will meet her Jesus some sweet day. I can remember one day Mr. Mr. Moderator, just bear with me a minute. I can remember one day, Leonie and I, the first she ever beat me. Leonie and I was arguing about a red food man. One of us said the red food man passed. The other one said, no, pass yet. But Leonie and I, she decided to say pass and we said, no, pass. Because my sister needs the bread food for dinner. And hell broke loose. That's the first time my sister ever grabbed me. And when she beat me, trust me, she framed me back. She framed me back because it's not in her will to do it. Some are no murmur, some are no, no rough. Whenever time it comes to the handsome mind, that's my sister. The guys always go there and they go in front. And they knock, Sama, Sama. She knows they are in food. And they get a shower like in every other month. But and close to, 
she'll spear them and she put clothes on them. That's my sister. Oh dear. Lord of mercy. I miss her. Then I got the news that my sister passed away. I was talking to one of my family members out here and she was like, what happened? Oh sister, oh, how no, I did man, just tell me. And she said that she not hear nothing more. She's still there. I said, oh, she look. She was like, she look that way. I called Pat, I said, Pat, how is sister looking? Pat said, man, tell me no answer this. I don't know where we can go then. She weak. But by the time because she not too awful. You know what she said to me? She said, where are you out of Jamaica? I said to her, I said, me just a talk to Nadine and she said, that I'm all right. You know, you saw my dad. <laughs> no, that's how she sent me news for me. When we call Honeyl, Honeyl said, Pamela, I told him you was funny. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. <laughs> that's how we told him was. We not so sensible when he come to those things. We cannot take those things. We not so sensible. We talk to my brother. Bishop Biden, we talked to him. He said, Lord Jesus, I don't know. Miss Mommy, Miss Evangelist, our I mean, Mr. Gordon, she said, I told your brother that your sister, your sister traveling, you know. I told her that she's traveling. But let me tell you something. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. All we have to do. Where we feel like we felt we run short. Fix up ourselves. Fix up ourselves. Fix up ourselves so we can be heaven bound. Fix up ourselves and let us have the assurance that some sweet day we will meet our dear sister, our mother. Leonie, Junie, Pamela, Patricia, Stephanie, Carol. Petula is not here with us. We are up in a prayer. Michael, the one seed. The holy seed. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Live a life. Some sweet day, we will meet our sister, our mother, our auntie, our church sister on the beautiful shore. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. It's now offering time. Amen. It's now time to give. And I know Pastor Yuta, don't mind. Pastor Ali, don't mind. He said it. That they have a great project going on here. Amen. So please give. Dig deep. Amen. I'm going to ask us to stand at this time. I'm going to ask Evangelist Ivor Peters. Your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to open your program. We're going to sing in that great triumphant morning. Choir.
paper on the other side.
Lord and the presence of the Lord in the United States. Somebody just give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be buried. He's worthy to be buried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Really? Amen. And this time we have the second lesson. The second lesson will be read by Anne Marie Baker. Sister Anne Marie Baker, everybody will be seen. And then we we'll have a tribute by Sister M. Smith Evans where you will be seen. And then we we'll have an item, Elder Ian Reed, H E A C, Bamboo Spring. And then come in that order. Praise the Lord, everyone. Jesus died and rose again, even so then also with sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. We honor by saying, Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord another time. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. It is a great feeling for us to be here this afternoon to, to celebrate the life of our pastor, Utah, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Pastor Utah, too. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you future hope, and expected end. Pastoring over a congregation come with great responsibilities such as preaching and teaching the word of God to the people, engaging us in covenant practice, praying for the people, setting family issues. She has stood faithfully alongside the man of God with love, support, and encouragement and faith showing true continental God and the work she has been called to do. Tribute to our late founder, builder, leader, minister, Pastor Hyacinth B. Utah, and the Heavens Way United Pentecostal Church, Wilson's Run. Pastor Wilson's Run. Wilson's Run Church started at the time when Pastor Allen and the late Pastor Desmond Uther under the guideline of the late Pastor Dalson and the United Pentecostal Body on September 8, 1994. The late Pastor Desmond Keith Uther and his darling wife was ordained to carry on this mission in Wilson's Run. As the Bible says, as I quote, Go out to the highways and edges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. St. Luke 14, verse 23. End of quote. That exactly what they did together 
Heaven's Way United Pentecostal Church start off with a great Sunday school under the Uter's leadership. Pastor Desmond Keith Uter has run with the mantle for six years and handed over to his wife, Pastor Hyacinth B. Uter. She carried on until it's time to say goodbye. Pastor Uter was a woman of God, one who loves to see the works of the Lord goes on, both spiritual and temporal. One who gives good advice, encouragement, and made provisions for those in need. She was a faithful minister, one who dedicated her life for the church and the people of God. She has the community best interest at heart. She was loved by many and she loved the people of God. During her sickness, when we called or visited her, she would always ask about the church. She would encourage us by saying, as I quote, stay with the Lord, stay with the Lord, this is your church, hold on to God, continue to fight, don't give up, God is going to reward you one day, end of quote. These are just few words to us, even though it was not easy, need to travel, but she her head on. We remember in one of her message, she put a charge upon the brethren of Wilson's run. Stay with the Lord. Press your way. Praise God. your way through. You have a work to do yes. and you must do it well. That's right. She is no longer here with us. I encourage each and every one to stay with the Lord. She is not dead. She is sleeping and we are really and we really miss her. We really miss our pastor but we know that one day we will see her again. Family members, I know you have a, lost a mother, an aunt, a sister, a cousin, grandmother, but hold on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. She is gone to the best place where there is no more pain, no more sickness, no more heartache, no more sorrow. She, she left with she left all, with all the, brethren, the church brethren at the heart. Comfort yourself in the Lord. Sleep on our beloved pastor and take your rest. Until that day, we will meet again. God bless you all. Shall we bless the Lord, everybody? Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Shall we bless the Lord, everybody? Shall we worship the Lord, everybody? Praise God. I'm a bit tired. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. When it comes to the work of the Lord, praise the name of Jesus. We'll do anything for God's business. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Greetings are in order to all the bishops and ministers. All the workers of God in their respectful areas, we greet you well in Jesus' precious and holy name. Greetings are in order from my pastor, Pastor Iris Morrison from Bamboo Spring. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Like a ship sailing on. Thank you. 
tribute from Ivory Cletus in Christ Community Church, Christ Apostolic Church, wait a bit, UPC, amen.
Apostolic Church to extend condolences on behalf of our presiding bishop, bishop, bishop Dr. C. Everton Thomas, and all the members of the Emmanuel family. Amen. Amen. Um, as you heard, I am from Snow Hill. Praise the Lord. And Snow Hill, all the way in Port Antonio. Important church. A couple of years ago, I went to a school in, in Anova by the name of La Calva. And I happened to meet the late tennis upon. And I went to the church in King's Chapel. And after the service, Bishop Palmer drove 17 miles to take us back to school. 17 miles. And so, on leaving college, I was asked to take over somewhat of a dead church, five persons lock up for the rest of the week. And I was asked to take over that church as a pastor in Portland. And so I started pastoring there in very close proximity to Case. And so Pastor Palmer impacted my life in such a way that I started to pick up the students at Case, carrying them. If, I said, if Pastor Palmer could have driven 17 miles to take them back to school, and so for the past 35 years, that man has impacted my life. And so we became our home. The church at Snow Hill has grown and became our home for the apostolic students from all across Jamaica who goes to case to study. And so that's where I met Sister Anne-Marie and Sister Stephanie. You might be wondering why I'm going all the way in here. And so we have shot, I have chatted to kids for all these years, picking up these students. And so we met Sister Stephanie and then became actually members of the Emmanuel Apostolic Church in Snowy. As a matter of fact, over the years, we have baptized over 300 students. Some of them are pastors and leaders even in UPC, starting to work all over the world. And so we have got to admit Sister Stephanie, and she became a wonderful friend of Emmanuel in Snow Hill. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, she actually, while she was a student of case, she actually became a tight spear at the church. And after she left, she would have sent up packaged yams and sent it up and for it to the church. And having met these girls, you know, I can feel the, the, the personality and the spirituality of pastor you than them because they, as a matter of fact they served as you come president while they were here at case and we just want to bless god for the many lives that this great woman has touched praise the lord jesus may god continue to bless as a matter of fact her ministry continues in the lives of those who she have touched may god continue to bless you the family Sister Stephanie, we love you. And we travel all the way from Port Antonio to be here. Because of the impact you have with the family. We love you. 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 We love you.
due to his family and all other who are related to them, access to your condolences on behalf of my family and them. My task here is to read a tribute from the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica in honor of the life of Pastor Hyacinth Bernice Luther. Thank you, that's very good. Tribute in honor of the life of Pastor Hyson Bernie Suter from the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. In remembering Pastor Hyson Suter, we all will remember her as being a humble, soft-spoken, and quiet giant in Christ. She was a giant in character, love, and dedication to her family and the ways in which she championed the work of the kingdom. Sister Yuta received her Holy Ghost baptism experience in 1969 at the Holiness Born Again Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic in Stettin District, Trelawney at the age of 19. Shortly after, in 1971, she married the love of her life, Desmond, who was also a member of the church. Sister Yuta quickly got into ministry, singing on the choir and working in the Sunday school department. The couple later relocated and started attending Greater Highway Missionary Church, where they both worked in the ministry, with Sister Yuta being appointed as missionary. They later moved their church membership towards the United Pentecostal Church under the leadership of the late Reverend Laurel Dawson. Brother and Sister Yuta were involved in all areas of the church. Sister Yuta worked in all departments except for the men's fellowship department. The only one she could work in, eh? She was a woman after God's own heart as she stood for holiness and grew up her children in the fear of the Lord. Not to be fearful of him, but to reverence him whenever they call upon him in prayer and worship. Minister Yuta was very committed to the work of the Lord and she equally loved the people of God as she would always be seen with her husband witnessing to the lost souls, visiting and praying with the members of the communities in which they labored. So zealous was she that when Pastor Dawson needed committed workers to assist Minister Leslie Allen with the work in Wilson's Run, she and her hus late husband, Desmond, were among the chosen few who were sent out on September 8, 1994 to start a work in the community of Wilson's Run. After years of laboring in the field, Minister Desmond Buter was appointed as pastor and Sister Eisen his assistant. Similar to her commitment and dedication at Warsaw UPC, Minister Yuta's approach to the work at Wilson's Run was no less. She took on the task of ensuring that every department was formed in the church, and she worked these departments, mentoring young converts and not so young converts in working in church, filling the roles in the departments, giving herself more time to oversee what she deemed as critical departments. That's the Sunday School Department, the Youth and Missions Department. After, passing, after the passing of her husband, Minister Isaac Duter continued the work at Wilson's Run, with the oversight being given by the Western District Superintendent and the Office of the District Presbyter. She was granted a local license with the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica in 2001, and in 2004, granted an upgrade to the general license. The role of oversight of the church was later transferred to the regional executive presbyter for Region 5 with the change of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica from district to a regional operations. Minister Hyacinth Utah was duly installed as pastor of Heaven's Way Tabernacle in Wilson's Run on May 24, 2012 where she carried out her duties with dignity and a sense of urgency to see the lost souls of the Wilson's Run 
and neighboring communities saved from the pangs of hell. As pastor, it was her duty to feed the flock. Let me go again. As pastor, it was her duty to feed the flock of Christ, and that she did very well. She was a supporter of all activities carried out in the local assembly and guided the young people during their planning and implementation of young people's services and social activities. With her mantra, which is holiness unto the Lord always, Pastor Yuta lived her life for all to see that beautiful light of Christ and will come to know more about this God who, sh who shone through her. She was always armed with a word for all the persons she met. Be it a word of comfort, a word of encouragement, or just simply sharing. Pastor Yuta was a committed supporter of the organization that's the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, as she would be present at events at the district, regional, and national levels. She will be seen at many annual national conferences, missions prior conferences, school of missions training seminars, missions growth seminars, youth rallies, and national women's fellowship activities, including the annual retreats. One powerful word to sum up the character of this noble giant, Pastor Hyacinth Bernice Utah. That word is faithful. Faithful to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ and determined to live in holiness without which no man shall see God. She kept the faith. She has run the race and she is now gone on to be with her maker who will reward her for all that she has done to point men and women to Calvary. Sleep on, Pastor Isaac Judah. As Psalm 116, 15 summits, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. God bless Pastor Yuta's memory. As a tribute from the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. Praise God. Surely she lived a life that was well lived. I'm sure she could say I hope that many of us will be able to say the same when we find ourselves where she is right now. Praise God. At this time, we'll be having a the, well, the, the combined core from the classes three of Region 5 of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica. They will come in to minister to us in Jesus' name. Worship as they do so in Jesus' name.
in Jesus. Somebody just lift your hands and say hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We've come to the power of the service where we're shifting the focus for a little. We're shifting the focus from Pastor Utah. And the focus is now on those who are alive. I can hear the word. This word that is will go for today too is not for Pastor Utah. You should have heard the word many times before and would have given heed to the word. But there's somebody in this house today that need to have a receptive heart to the word. This is a word for you. Not your neighbor, but you. And at this time, it's my privilege to invite to this podium our National Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, Bishop Ogarth McCoy, as he comes worship with him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. One more time. To the King of Kings. the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Father in heaven, we honor you. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace. You are God Almighty. Thank you for being the faithful God that your servant trusted in for the majority part of her entire life. Thank you for your goodness. I give unto the Spirit of Almighty God this afternoon, the head of my life. I greet Assistant National Superintendent, Amen, Bishop Dale Fisher, all the other bishops, pastors, ministers of the apostolic family. And if there be any other otherwise, I salute you in the wonderful name of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see Bishop Jocelyn Williams. I've known him for over 35 years. I don't think you'd recognize me, but I recognize you, sir. It has been a long while, but God bless you. My wife is here. Amen. But you won't be able to see her right now. We're here to give support to the family. Amen. Amen. And it's just so interesting that just 11 years and one month ago, I was present and was the one to officiate at the installation of Pastor I said, Utah, I have many plans, but the one we serve, he knows all things. So I salute the family member. Amen. The support. This is just the, the, the beginning of it. And so we greet all the brethren from Willis's Run and from near and far. We salute you once again. In the precious name of Jesus. And just before we pray and look into the word, I would like to say to someone here that the God we serve is too good to do wrong. And he's too wise to make a mistake. And says, we'll understand it better by and by. Almighty God. You'll find in the book of John chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 16 to 22. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. 
that they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Father, we come before you, the faithful one, the one who said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. We thank you for being the faithful God in whom Pastor Iason Newton trusted. And Lord, we know without the shadow of a doubt that she died with a hope. In fact, she didn't die, she's asleep. Oh, because those who are not saved die, but those who are born again sleep. Amen. Father, even as I stand before this sacred desk, just a lump of clay, but I avail myself if you'll use me to speak to someone, Lord Jesus. And we pray that life will spring out of death and light will spring out of darkness. Man to this lump of clay, Lamb of God, as we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious name. The Lord bless you. May be seated. I'd like to greet Presbyter in a very Robert Edwards, that is in a very, very special way. Amen. Though being a part of the board, but he's a person on the ground in this region and has played, I believe. The early Bishop Ambrose Bancroft Hine would have been very, very proud of him because he took over a legacy and has been doing a phenomenal job on the God. Put your hands together for Pastor Robert Taylor. I'd like to use a thought by the name of the Lord and I took my watch off and I'm keeping a track of it. And I'd like to say to someone here this afternoon, there is hope. Tell your neighbor, there is hope. Almighty God, there is hope. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men most miserable. But there's hope beyond the grave. There's hope to see past Utah one day. God Almighty. The word hope has arrived from the Hebrew word a pizza. It means a feeling of expectation or desire for something. It, it means to wait for deliverance with joy and full confidence. It means a confident and trust beyond. It means to expect or anticipate. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We serve a God. In fact, in every religion, because we do not believe in religion. You see, religion is what man does to appease the God he believes exists. But salvation is what the only true God has done to provide, hallelujah, eternal life for mankind. And so we trust in salvation and not in religion. But did you know that all the major religions of this world, they all have one thing in common. Say with me for a while. They all believe that mankind will live again. And so, traditionally, they would store money and goods, even food, for the life after. Jesus said me today. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12 to 20, we see where the Lord speak of the resurrection. Everybody say resurrection. resurrection. Let us look at the word resurrection. It is derived from a Greek word, anastasis, which means the reunion of the body and soul of a human being that have been separated by death. Yes. Now, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So those who believe in Jesus, they will never die. God Almighty, do you have hope in Jesus Christ today? If not, why not? The thief on the cross understood this. But did you know that Christianity is the only faith in the world which bases its claim of acceptance on the resurrection of its founder? If one should go to the sepulchres of all the religious founders all across the globe, all things being equal, you will find some aspect of their remains. But if you should go, hallelujah, to Israel, if you should go to the tomb where they laid our Savior, there is no remnant of anything remaining. I had the privilege almost 15 years ago to have gone to Israel and I said if there's one place I wanted to bring me, bring me to the place where they buried my Lord. And when it took me, I walked right down into that place where over 2,000 years ago he was buried and he's not there. The tomb is empty. Stay with me. So Christianity is the only faith in the world that bases its claim of acceptance on the resurrection of its founder. The Lord Jesus said that. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the ultimate victory over Satan. It is the great hope of the saints of all the ages. Everyone who lived before the cross, they looked toward the cross. Because the first prophetic utterance made in Genesis 3 verse 15, it speaks to the seed of the woman and it speaks God Almighty oh, to that serpent. Now if Jesus was not risen from the dead, then Christianity would also be dead. Our preaching would be vain and we would still be in our sins. I want someone to understand that what separates Christianity from every other faith in the world is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Love of God. Now in the Old Testament, there were some persons who died and were brought back to life. So the son of the widow of Sarephat by Elijah in 2 Kings 17, verse 17 to 24. The son of the Shunammite by Elisha in 2 Kings 4, 13 to 37. The dead man who was thrown into Elisha's grave according to 2 Kings 13, verse 20 to 21. And when the dead corpse touched the Almighty oh, God, the bones of the dead prophet, he got up and was alive. The Lord wants us to understand that there is something phenomenal. Let's walk over into the New Testament now. Oh, glory to God. The widow of Nain's son. By Jesus in Luke 7, 11 to 18, Jesus saw a funeral procession and as God robed in flesh, he stopped the procession and asked them to open the casket and he called a young man by his name and the young man who was dead cut up hallelujah Cyrus' daughter in Matthew 9 18 to 26 we know the story Jesus went and he said she is not dead she's only sleeping and they start to laugh him to scorn so he sent out all the unbelievers the Lamb of God and he called her by name you see he is the resurrection Mary and Martha asked Jesus the same that use the same words Lord if thou hast been here our brother would not have died but one said it in an accusatory way in an accusing way and Jesus said thy brother shall rise again she said I know Lord that he shall rise at the last day so she saw him as the God of the past Lord if you were here 
or a brother will not have died. But now that he has died, there's nothing that can be done. And then Jesus said, a brother shall rise and it shall jump from the past to the future. Or a brother shall rise at the last day at the resurrection. But Jesus said, was trying to show her, I am not just the God of the past. I am not just the God of the future, but I am the God of the now. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live. But then he said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me, God Almighty, shall never die. In John chapter 5, from verse 25, 26, Jesus said that our comment, where the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. He said, marvel not at this, Lamb of God, for the always comment, when those who are in the grave, shall hear the voice of the Son of God and shall come forth some unto everlasting life and some to everlasting condemnation. But Jesus was saying, those who are spiritually dead right now, if you hear the voice of the Son of God, you can come from death into life. Lazarus in John 11, 38 to 44 is the third person in the New Testament who died and was brought back to life. But guess what? If Jesus had not called him by name, oh Lord Jesus. Because you see, Mary said the same thing that Martha said. Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And this time Jesus said, I'm show me where you lay him. And when they took Jesus to Lazarus' grave, the shortest verse, verse 35 of the Bible said, Jesus went. Why did he weep? It was because of Lazarus, because he knew what he was going to do. But I believe he saw the second death. He said, this death I can handle. This death I can deliver Lazarus from. But there's another death. The second death that I won't be able to do anything about. You see, there are three basic types of death. Your spiritual death, when a person is separated from the presence of God. You have physical death, when our spirit is separated from our body. And then you have eternal death, which is a continuation of spiritual death. So when someone is dead spiritually and they die physically, oh, Lamb of God, they're going to be alienated from the presence of God for all eternity. So Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. If he had not called the one he wanted by name, Jesus, every dead from Adam come right down the line would have come up. Dorcas was brought back to life to the hands of the apostle Peter in Acts 9, 36 to 43. Eutychus, which teaches us that we shouldn't fall asleep in church. Eutychus was in church and he fell asleep and he fell down a certain level and broke his neck and died. Can you imagine if CVM and the cleaner company and TVJ had gotten that? But the apostle Paul went down. Oh, Lamb of God. And because he had a resurrection power, he called up to Eutychus and he came back to life. Lord Jesus. But the sixth person in the New Testament who died and was brought back to life never died again. Jesus. So who was Jesus from the dead? Jesus. He said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it up back again. I want us to understand that this Jesus we're talking about is not a second person in a trinity. He is the first and he is the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega. God Almighty. You are paid to John on the Isle of Patmos. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And guess what? I have the keys of death and of death. So no good man can kill you except Jesus. No life man can kill you except Jesus promised. So he rose from the dead with the seed of him.
immortality. That means he cannot die again. He rose in a real body, not a ghost or a phantom, but he had no blood. You see, the life of the physical life is in the blood. Oh, but the life of the spirit, Almighty God, oh, there's no blood for those who are born again with this resurrection body. He was the first fruit of them that slept. He represents the first in a different species of humankind, if you please. Almighty God. He appeared to Emmaus, to the Emmaus disciples, and they said, did not our heart burn with us while he spoke to us and opened the world almighty God I want us to understand that there is hope beyond the grave and that's why pastor I have sent you to oh, I have made my choice forever I will walk with Christ my Lord not from him my soul shall sever while I'm trusting in his word I the Lord the road are taken rough and toilsome though it be and although despise for sin. Jesus, I'll go through with thee. I'm coming down. The materialists say, spend your way out. The politicians say, legislate your way out. The industrialists say, work your way out. The capitalists say, buy your way out. The philosophers say, think your way out. But Jesus said, I am the way out. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. If there's no way, there is no going. If there's no truth, there is no knowing. And if there's no life, there is no living. to a psychologist in the end result you will have an adjusted sinner if you bring a sinner to a good medical doctor in the end you will have a healthy sinner if you give a sinner millions of dollars in the end you will have a rich sinner if you bring a sinner before a judge and he was guilty in the end you will have a convicted if a sinner turns over a new leaf, in the end you will have a reformed sinner. But, 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 if, a, if you bring a sinner to Jesus Christ, and that sinner repents of your sins, oh, Lord, oh, God, and get baptized in water, not in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And so when you repent of your sins, I don't care how wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in sin you are. You could have gone like dopey when the blood of Jesus touches you. Oh, God. of the Holy Ghost today. How oh, badly do you want him? How oh, hungry are you for him? So, so if you bring a sinner to the cross and they repent of their sins, baptize in Jesus' name, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. In the end, you will have a saved sin. A sinner saved by grace. Stay with me. Let's stand together. There's a statistic that. Hallelujah. It is said that for those who grew up in church, 85% of those who do not accept Jesus by the reach the age of 18 never will. For those who grew up in church, 90% of those who don't accept Jesus by the age of 20. At the age of 35, only one out of every 100,000 persons will accept the Lord by repenting of their sins, 
being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. At the age of 45, only one out of every 200,000 persons. At the age of 55, only one out of every 300,000. At the age of 65, only one out of every 400,000. At the age of 75, only one out of every 500,000. So even if they get baptized, they'll be at the altar and the majority will die without accepting the Holy Ghost. Why, sir? The older person gets the order for them to break from sin. Sin will keep you longer than you meant to stay. Sin will promise you things that it cannot, cannot Sin will use you, abuse you, and then remove you. Bishop Hossin, my former pastor and mentor, told us the story. The last drink of water. And I want to stand for this as I close. It was Mary. She was about 16 years old. She was from a very affluent family background. And Mary didn't go to church, didn't acknowledge God in her life. She was on her way from school one evening and she saw a tent cruising. And so she walked up to the tent. Something from the service pulled her. She had her friend. She said, I'm going. She went up to the altar and she felt a presence she had never felt in all her life. She felt tears running down her face and she began with no one instructing her to tell the Lord she's sorry. Her dad passed by and was told that she was under the tent. And when he looked and saw his daughter, he was as mad as she. When Mary got home, she saw her dad pacing the floor. When he saw her, he said, Mary, you embarrassed me tonight. How could you go and hang out with those fanatics? I tell you, Mary, if you ever go back under that tent and be among those idiots, I am going to disinherit you. I am going to wipe you off my will. And he said some more stuff to her. Mary went into her room with tears running down her face. And she said, Jesus, if you can hear me, I wanted to take away this feeling from me. I never want to feel this way ever again. God, God, God. She went to school the following day. And she was fine. And she, on her way home the evening, she saw the folks under the tent having service. She stood on the outside and she laughed and she laughed and she mocked. When her father was passing by and saw her, he said to his big shot friends, you see her? I won her last night. The following morning she went to school. About lunchtime, she took sick. She was rushed home and the family doctor came and was trying everything. He took her dad outside and said, Mr. Brown, I have been your family doctor all your life and I cannot hide this. Mary only has a few hours to live. And so he said, you, Dr. you can't do anything. He said, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. He said, but I have all the money. He said, this is not about your money. Something she has picked up a real sickness, and there's nothing I can do to help her. And so Mr. Brown went inside and said, Mary, pray to Jesus. Yeah. Tears running down her face. Mary said, Daddy, oh daddy, please do not torment me with that name. I would have accepted it fully two nights ago, but you and she began to weep uncontrollably. Out of respect, of a few minutes, she said, Dad, what time is it? He said, it is two o'clock here. 
He said, Dad, I am so thirsty. Can you give me a drink of water, please? And so the father went outside of the yard where the well was and got her a drink of water. She drank it down hastily and said, Daddy, what time is it? She said, he said, it's 20 minutes past two. Why do you keep asking the time? She said, Daddy, I am going to a place where there is no time. And I am still so thirsty. May I have another drink of water, please? Mr. Brown got up and he rushed outside to the well to get another drink of water. When he got back, he said, here, Mary, here, no answer. Mary, here is the water, no answer. Mary, Mary. And Mr. Brown examined her pulse. His precious Mary was dead. What will you do with Jesus? What is the value of your soul? Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, 35, 36. But what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Where will you run? Where will you hide? What time is it? You will say, sir, it's 20 minutes, it's 10 minutes of three. What time is it in your life? Have you answered God's question for your final destiny? Have you made your reservation for eternity? It matters not if you rich us. You're going to need a No, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. Close your eyes with me. You're going to need someone to help you. I shut up. You're going to need someone to guide you. You're going to need someone. Jesus returned. That's why Jesus returned from the valley of the shadow. Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him? Hold your hand and be. There is hope, but for only those who are in Christ. While the blood runs in water, while the blood runs in water, that I'm mighty. I wish I could make an answer right now. We are burning for somebody. Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to hand this mic over. neutral. You cannot be someday. Is there a Mary here today? Mary, what are you going to do with Jesus today? Lamb of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe in what you instructed me to do. Now the rest is dependent on every person within the sound of this mind. Father, we pray that your spirit will move upon someone here today. Could it be that someone here might be attending the last funeral? You know? Father, we pray right now that you break every 
you're the stain of darkness. That you're going to repent and
in the state you are, you know where you will end up. A crisis eternity. Is there a person here that wants to stand? Just want to indicate that you wanted to pray for you before we go on further. You understand the value of your soul? You just want to say, pray for me. Is there such a person in the house today? Is there such a person? I am glad the blood is no longer the bishop's shoulder. He has delivered the word the Lord has laid on his heart for you. What you do is up to you now. Amen? Somebody shout hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God. We're just happy today. Thank you all for the word. God bless you. We're going to continue to hear the sound of the youth of God. I want to greet the members of the Rada staff from the children and Tintan and team. We're here. You want to just fabulous recognize you. Members of the Rada team from the children and Tintan. We're also from the region and also the hours of the community. God bless you. Praise God. We'll come to the program at this time. We'll be having a tribute. Sometimes Mr. Desmond Smith Council. He was followed by an item from the Augustine Primary and Infant School. And that will come at this time. What time is this? What time is this on earth? And most of all, the grieving relatives and friends, good afternoon. It's never an easy thing to say goodbye. We have all experienced it sometimes, and we all can and how difficult it is. I'm very happy to be here this evening in spite of the occasion. I want to give them my sympathy. But what I am pleased about this evening, I'm in an occasion where I don't have to look around if I should say something good about this person. Neither do I have to wonder of all the accolades that she have gotten since you have been here, if the persons are speaking the truth. I can tell you, every word is true. This woman was a special woman. She was a community person. She was a woman of God. She was a caring, loving peacemaker. Where Thompson Town is concerned, I want to give you my sympathy. Because I think you have lost the mother for that particular community. Any problem there was, people could run to Sister Yuta. Because she was such a good woman. I mean, I've never seen that lady without a smile, no matter how the circumstances. I have known this family for years, from Brother Desmond, Utah days. He used to serve some of the biggest bigger around by all sides. Sister Utah continue to support me as I am by her. And I don't know, honey, you stop selling me hurry up now, I don't know why. But I got to check it out. Yes, this woman, I, I, it would be remiss of me to come here to try and find adjectives to describe her because I am not capable. 
she is one of those who are very common amongst women these days. And I'm telling you, I would like to encourage the girls who are still here to continue the work of Sister Yuki. Because she has left a model. She has been a monument in this community and beyond the church. She was such a great community person that I think a few years ago, she was recommended for community award from the Trelawney, you know, from the mayor's, the mayor's award for community service from the Trelawney Municipal Corporation. Because she deserves that. I don't want to take much time because I know people are getting weary. I just want to let you know that she had well lost a great stalwart. The last time we happened to interrupt, I had to interrupt with her. She called me and she said, that was in the middle of the drought. Counselor, you know, I was such a nice voice. Me now no water. He said, so what we going to know with that Christina and I Evelyn? He said, give me want water. He said, no worries, man, we ain't going to fall tomorrow. <laughs> she said, all right. Me see if rain come tomorrow. Unfortunately, no rain fall tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> she called him on the other day. She said, come slow. No rain no fall with me water there. <laughs> I had to call a truck man. And I said, go and give her $5,000 worth of water. And little did I know that that was the last good I would be doing for her. When I heard that she was in the hospital, knowing that something special was planned for her, I even turned to Pat and said, I hope that she is taken good care of, that she can be helped to receive that momentous award that she deserved. God, she didn't make it. But today I want to say that she is in a better place. I want to say to the girls, be strong. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from God, who made heaven and her. And I'm sure that she's enjoying a better hour today. Because the award that she's enjoying is a throne gathering award. So we are happy for that. God bless you all. May your soul rest in peace and life perpetual shine upon you. Church in Carterwood. 
then people would pay money to put us up again and again. This formed a strong background of our growth in the Lord and in his work. Pastor Utah has impacted the lives of many as a pastor, teacher, mother, sister, friend, community representative, school representative, counselor, advisor, supporter, and so many other titles. She has been the source of many progress with her strength, cheerfulness, contagious smile, and as a strong pillar, as a faithful servant of God. She was a perfect pattern for others to emulate. She has fought a good fight, finished the course, and have kept the faith. Pastor Yuta, on behalf of my children, well, that is Mrs. Crooks' children, you will be sadly missed, but Sama and Miss Creamy, your memories will live on. Sleep in peace. And this is from Justice Sonia Cruz. From Ulster Spring Primary and the children to come and show solidarity to Miss Yuta. Please come now. And I must acknowledge at this time all the educators in the house. I am sure we have many, many teachers here. I saw them on the outside who have been here to show their support to Miss Yuta and uh, many principals as well, past principals and everybody to the family. We show our support, we say condolence. It's time of your bereavement, all right? And this is a short quote now from us to John. Benjamin Franklin once wrote, well done is better than well said. And that speaks to the life of Sam. This is so reflective of the memories of Miss Yuta as she has in fact done her best and imparted and impacted values to all persons she had the chance to encounter during her life. To the children, a mother's arms are made of tenderness and children sleep soundly in them. It is this thought that we would like to share with the family who grieve at this moment. The arms of the community is open. Miss Yuta, Pat, affectionately called, the arms of your school family and co-workers are open. The Lord himself has extended his arms of comfort, so you are never alone. As Albert Einstein said, grief is an inhuman experience, taking place in a human body. But because of grief, our humanity exists. May there be comfort in knowing that someone cares. Knowing that someone cares about you, even in the time of your bereavement, may we bond closer as human beings, even as we experience sorrow and loss. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So I'm just going to do one verse of this song. Of cross the heart burning desert struggling for the right road to choose but somewhere Yeah. 
Pastor Hyacinth Hilton, Samos, Norm, Pastor. Today, I stand with mixed feelings as I reflect on a woman of God whose virtue impacted my life and the life of my family in so many profound ways. She was more than a pastor. She was a mother, a best friend, a motivator, and someone you could talk to about anything. I remember, as a child, she used to send us to the spring to get water to build heavens where united Pentecostal church, yes. and to look good to cook the fire, yes. to cook the food for the right men. She was determined to finish everything that she started. In fact, it was, it was her seeking help from a community member to help move the mall to construct the church, which Garfield Baker was invited by pastor to carry mall to build the church. Yes. As such, her resourcefulness led to me getting a husband hey. years later. Hey. And this is my husband standing right next to me. That's right. She was the one who did our engagement. I can remember she hold this ring in her hand mm. and she hold it up and said, look at me. Mm. This ring has no end. So must your relationship be. It must not have Amen. any end. Praise God. Amen. She was a godly woman who mentored others and saw the best in us even when we could not see it in ourselves. She gave me many opportunities to grow as a Christian and to serve in the church. She also encouraged me to go to Bible school and was one of my biggest supporters at my graduation. While being away, I could always look forward to her calls. She would talk for hours, both on the phone and after our weekly prayer meetings. Every Friday night, we, ha we normally have prayer meetings at 9.30, Jamaica time, 8.30. She always looked forward for that. I remember the Friday before she, after she went to the hospital, I did not put her on the prayer meeting because somebody said to me, let you rest. The Saturday morning, somebody called her and told her about the prayer meeting, how it night. She called me same time and come. Tash, why you never put me on the prayer meeting? I could have listened. I said, Pastor, I just wanted to obey my church sister because she's older than me. She said, let your rest. She was mad with me. Praise God. And she was the one who encouraged me to start the prayer meeting because she allowed me to be the prayer coordinator in Hunter's Road. So when I moved overseas, I was encouraged to do it by her because she could not come out to go to church. And she looked forward for me praying, for us praying on the phone together every Friday night. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Today, I weep, but not as one without hope. I weep as one has a joy in her heart because the woman of God, a woman of virtue, has completed her journey on this side, sleeping. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord in the house. God is good. And all of the time. All protocols observed. Praise God. I extend condolences to the Utah family on behalf of the Wars of United Pentecostal Church body and also on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Winston Utah, better known as Clive and Georgette. They also send their apology for absence. Praise God. Citation in honor of the late Pastor Hyacinth Bernice Utah, Pastor of Heaven's Way UPC from the 24th of the 5th, 2012, to the 1st of the 1st, 2023. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Pastor Hyacinth Bernice Utah has selflessly served the United Pentecostal body 
for over 20 years because of her love, fear, and reverence for the Lord. As a member of the Warsaw United Pentecostal Church family, between 1989 and 1994, she has served in the Sunday School and Ladies' Departments and also ministered on the choir meritoriously. In addition, she was actively involved in the Ladies' Department both locally and regionally as she was responsible for three parishes in the region, formerly known as the Western Region. Here she served as the sectional leader. Without question, she has been known to have been an ardent participant in the National Men and Women's Fellowship Retreat and National Conference over Attendance did not go unnoticed as she was rewarded in 2019 with an award for her faithful support. On September 4, 1994, the late Pastor Desmond Keith Utah and Sister Hyacinth Bernice Utah were appointed to lead the new work at Wilson's Run. With willingness and dedication, this monumental work would have started with regular Sunday school sessions. It later blossomed into a congregation of up to 40 members with all departments functional. Sadly, on December 28, 1999, Pastor Desmond Luther passed away due to ill health. After his passing, Pastor Luther led the congregation for 12 years before she was ordained as a licensed minister and given her own mandate on May 24, 2012. Since then, she held the torch with God strengthening her. Indeed, she has proven the words of 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, and I quote, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Despite the many challenges she withstood, Pastor Yuta wrote history on the walls of Heaven's Way UPC. She prayed, preached, taught, sang, and counseled. She sowed seeds of hope and love in the lives of her congregants. Undoubtedly, she made a difference when she effortlessly gave of her time to attend to the needs of the brethren of the church. Indeed, she was a woman of purpose who made an indelible mark on many individuals who walked through the church door and also others within the community. In fact, Pastor Yuta's stewardship, dedication, kindness, love, and God-fearing spirit have touched our lives immensely. She has served the Lord and the church enthusiastically tirelessly, faithfully, and with great compassion for her flock. Her humanitarian spirit reflected Jesus in his goodness and in his capacity to reach out to others. She has gone the extra mile. For this we are eternally grateful. Therefore, we honor Pastor Yuta for her diligence in serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Certainly, she has made a difference in the world by reflecting the joy of the Lord, the heart of Jesus, and the fruit of the Spirit. She demonstrated Paul's writing as stated in Galatians 6 verse 9, and I quote, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Benjamin Franklin once said, well done is better than well said. Well done, Pastor Yuta. Well done. I know in the light, all the brethren from Warsaw UPC and Heaven's Way UPC to stand at this time in honor of Pastor Yuta while I invite a member of the family to receive this citation on behalf of the family. We present it to you 
as a remnant of her life, her work, and her legacy. God bless you.
Yes, Nick. Big up yourself. Everything. Yeah. Trying time, I know it's very hard, but could you be kind enough? Could you be kind enough so we can finish the program? I know we have to cry. I know we have to cry. Everybody a girl grown. 
Pamela first would start the crying. That I would say, you put a bald blood. Spanking was my mom's delight. As you sleep, you get a beating. You know man could have beat her. She never spoiled the rod. Though the many spankings, not one of us has a mark to say, my mom beat me when I was a child, and this is the evidence. She beat us with love. Stephanie got the most beating because she was the one with the sharp tongue, even though she cannot be tamed. Now the step look are all grown and mom kept saying, thank God all my children come up with something good. And thank God all of my grandchildren them have sins. How can we can't pray for you no so? As a past resident of the Thompson Town community, she maintained a dignified approach, which is exemplary. She wore many hats that are worthy of emulating. She played a role, the role of a mother, a counselor, a nurse, a motivator, and a pastor. The love she had for her community members and those around had no boundaries. Back in the day, she was known to sell the best ice cream, which gave her the name Miss Creamy. As you know, we live in a farming community, and sometimes the machete does not reach the intended target but the foot or the finger. Though not a registered nurse, she rendered many first aids to those who needed it until professional help was sought. They would say, me a go I'm a get little dressing or two painkillers. She was like a first responder. She would visit the sick and made calls until they were well. Her community involvements were not overlooked as she was recognized in 2009 by the then Trelawney Parish Council and now Falmouth Municipal Corporation for community service recommendations made by the councillor, Mr. Desmond Smith, and also a mayor's award from his worship mayor, Colin Gager, in the field of religion in 2019. Awards were received with thankfulness and gratitude. Her work and worth speak to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 13 and I quote, and to his esteem them very highly in love for their very worth's sake and be at peace among yourselves. As the years go, some years ago her home was like a nursing home. She had two elderly women, her mother-in-law and a church member's mother who she took in and looked after until their passing, which she did from a true heart. In addition to that, her doors were always open to those who were in need, be it to live, to stop over for a night, grab, to grab a bite, to get some counseling or spiritual guidance or a venue to cook for funerals. She's never said no. Though many times her kindness were trampled on, she never gave up. Her mother deserved a pot of gold. Whatever she did was not for the likes, but for the love she had for her, for the people. She was a person who stopped at nothing to make sure people, people were comfortable and satisfied. We are sure her reward will be great.
want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. The choose in the beat. She had a heart that meant only good. She cherished people. She loved the people. She cared for people. She helped people. She listened to people's concerns. She shared with people. She respected people. She was willing, kind-hearted, gentle, and a peacemaker. No one could ever say that they had her, ever heard her louder than normal unless she was preaching. Miss Joyce and Mas Vin or neighbors for many, many years can attest to that. They never had a quarrel. She played the role of an excellent wife. She made sure her father was properly taken care of in all aspects of life. She was a stay-at-home mom, wife, and oh, what a marvelous job she did. Not that her head couldn't take book, as old people would say, because she was a great reader. But she chose to stay home and look, up, look after the house and her family. This couple was inseparable. She did everything to suit her father. If any husband broke bad, that was our father. I have never seen him with a pack of matches, much more to light the stove to make a cup of tea. Our mother did everything for him. He was fully spoiled by our mother. She adored him. I remember when she went overseas, one of my sisters ironed his shirt. When he took it off, he said, Ano, so now I'm out of iron it. <laughs> Mother was the holder of a green card, but when our father took sick in 1999, she gave it up to make sure he got the best treatment, which he definitely did. His precious memories are still fresh in our minds. Sama was the best mother grandmother and stepmother. We do not know what it feels like to be verbally abused. She has never told us a word that is degrading, demeaning, or words that will lower our self-esteem. We could go to her at any time to ask her favors. She was even the channel to her father because he was very stern. My mother was a grateful person whether it be great or small, whatever you gave her, she appreciated it. Complimented with a thank you and God bless you. The church and her children had planned an appreciation service that should have been on the 21st of May. When she was told about it, she was elated. I called her and said to her, girl, we are planning to let you drive in limousine to the function. And she laughed. Sama was also a very good secret keeper. She has gone home with all, your, with all you have told her, a great confidant she was. Sama had an excellent bond with her siblings, in-laws, and other family members. They would talk on the phone daily and for hours. She loved them with a passion. Most of them have flown in from overseas and all over to be here today. Unfortunately, Lloyd could not be here because of ill health. Uncle, I know that you're watching. Be encouraged by her beautiful memories. Has, ever, any, has anyone ever noticed how well put together our mom was when she put on her clothes? Yes. She was always modest. Yes. Colors all properly coordinated. Every time I looked at her, I felt really pleased in myself. And I would say, my mother, a real hot girl, you know. Yes. My, my church sister, Katie, would call her Sweet 16 each time she saw her, just to inform you that she was also a very good dressmaker. She even made some of her clothing for church and school. While she was in the hospital, she, told, she called her daughter, Julie, and said, Tell Steph if you not carry no ugly night to come up here. <laughs> Just to show you how fashionable our mother was. Though her husband died when she was pretty young, she never craved, 
craved to get another companion. She stuck to her children, grandchildren, and church family. They were her strength and oh, what an awesome job they did. She was never wanting of anything. Having a heart condition is very costly. Medication can cost up to $50,000, not to mention monthly visits and tests at the cardiologist. But as soon as she said, I am not well, two, one, two, or three of us are ready and phone calls from all the others to ensure that she got the best medical assistance. We love our mother dearly. In the year 2012, Mother was ordained as a, uh, as a minister of the gospel after the passing of her husband in 1999. Mother was a profound and found believer of her Christian faith. She detested when people walked to one time and out of line with their Christian belief. However, when they fell from the faith, she did not condemn them. She always encouraged them to return to the, to the Lord. Pastor Uter would attend most church events and functions put on by the Pentecostal body. As a minister of the gospel, she lived up to her obligations and expectations. Ministerial meetings, conventions, and men and women's retreat were a must for her. She was also given an award for her continued attendance at men and women's retreat. It was really a joyful occasion for her. Pastor Yuta was also a Sunday school teacher. She loved to work at the altar and she was also a missionary. At Heaven's Way United Pentecostal Church, where she pastored for over 20 years, her brethren never hesitated to express their love for her. She treated them with respect. She cared for them as her own children. She guided them in a godly path. Many times, us as children would wonder if she had shares with Digicel because she would call all of them every church time to find out if they were going to church. If a reply should be made that it was raining, she would say, rain not falling in church. The brethren knew and loved them. The brethren know she loved them dearly. I just want to encourage the brethren from Hebrews 13 verses 7 and 8. Remember your leader who spoke God's word to you. Imitate your faith as you consider the way their lives turned out. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. On Tuesday, April 25, 2023, our mother called her caregiver, Lisa Brooks. Sorry. On Tuesday, April 25, 2023, our mom's caregiver, Lisa, called to say our mom was not feeling well. So we decided to take her to the hospital to get some assistance. She was all bubbly and bright when she went to, when we went and visited her on a daily basis. However, Sama, the Sama that we brought to the hospital was not the same. Uh, after a week and three days, we became concerned what we thought she would return to her former glory, but she didn't. On
every social media platform and every gathering that we go to, we hear people expressing, expressing remarkable love and compassionate comments about her. God knows we feel good to know that she was our mother. Our mother has left a lasting legacy that is desirous of duplicating. The family, the church, and the community have lost a true stalwart. Finally, Hyacinth Bernice Yuta has modeled the way her children and grandchildren ought to live. She has passed leaving a loving bunch of children, stepchildren, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We have a close bond, one that is unmatched, and we want to keep it that way, as she would have loved us too. Pastor Yuta, otherwise called Samba, has left two more children, stepchildren, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, brothers, sisters, sons-in-law, daughter-in-law, nieces, nephews, church family, and a host of other relatives and friends. The family wants to extend their deepest gratitude to those who found the time to call, text, visit, inquire about her, and gave a helping hand. Thanks to Pastor Allen and wife, the board of officers, the, ch the Worcester Church family, the Heavens Way United Pentecostal family, the Pentecostal slash apostolic body, and the non-apostolates, her community members, persons from the adjoining communities, brethren, families, and friends overseas, Miss Lisa Brooks, her care, Lisa Brooks, her caregiver, and their families, and, the, and their families and Bell's funeral home. Thanks for lending me your ears. God bless you. Walk good. Let's praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well said. Amen. Amen. All right. The driver of Noah 59 Seven one JP, you're blocking somebody who needs to go right now. Now five nine seven one JT. Praise God. I'm gonna ask Bishop Keith Morris to come at this time, and he's gonna be praying for the family members. I'm gonna ask all the family members at this time to. Wherever you are, this time. Bishop, I'm going to ask you to come. Just before I pray, I just want to say that. Pastor you to this service today. I must tell you, Pastor Yuta deserves this. Verse that I knew, she deserves a service like this. And so we're going to be praying for the family. And I ask you to bow your heads as we pray at this time. Eternal God everlasting Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, thou who art mighty in wisdom by whom all things were made, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for this gathering that came together to pay their last respect to your servant. We thank you, God, for the life of Pastor Yuta. We thank you, God, for bringing her into the world and for the purpose that she came for. We thank you, God, for the lives that she has touched. Amen. We thank you for those that she has spoken to and they have accepted the gospel. We thank you for those who lay, she laid hands on them and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, for those of Father, Amen, who shall took in, Amen, in your arms. 
and allow them, O oh God, to find peace and happiness. Father, we thank you for her life. We thank you for all that she has done. And Lord, at this moment of time, she has left behind him and her family members, the immediate family and the extended family. They are left to mourn the passing of their loved one. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will keep your hands on their lives. Lord, right now they are mourning. It's difficult to control themselves. Because they have missed God so much. But we pray right now, God, that you will comfort them. We pray, God, that you will go with them. Wherever they might be, Lord Jesus, we ask the God to be with them. We thank you, God, for those that have attended Amen to Mom. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the help that they have given to her because they wanted to see her better. But God, you know best. So we pray right now, God, to bless this family. Knit them together in one. Help them, oh God, to continue to pray and continue to give you a praise because, God, you are the one that gives us life and you take life. And so, Father, we thank you that she died in a normal death. Father, bless these children. Bless this family continually. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are begging you right now, God, keep your hands on their lives. In the name of Jesus. We paralyze every plan of the enemy. I am all shut up. Against their lives right now. Oh, Father, confuse the enemy right now. As he's going to conference to come back. Confuse in Lord God in the name of Jesus. And let this family grow from strength to strength. Every demonic force, every demonic self, we come against it in the name of Jesus. That this, this family will grow. Amen and be an example. Have your way right now. Bless them right now, Jesus. You can comfort them. Comfort them right now. Lead them in the way that you want them to go. Direct them, Jesus. And even for those, if there are any that have not yet given their lives to you, God, we pray that they too will quickly give their lives to you and come and serve you as they were before. Have your way right now. Because, God, we believe there is a place up there for Amen. Pastor. And there will be a place for the family members. Bless them now. We ask his mercy to take that. In Jesus' name. Everybody, in Jesus' name.
here because the space that we have us told is very small. All right, so we're going to sing. Shine a little light Give sight to the ones who lost 